structural things like cracks appear over many years, but little things like growths and roots and weeds growing are also very, very common and don't take long to accumulate. So you can definitely hint at how well the place is being cared for with vegetation. Hey, welcome back to the second part of the architecture and buildings tutorial. Today we're going to be doing some more details on this building and getting it hopefully to a point where it's got a really nice polish on it and has that pixel perfection that we love so much. Let's get started. Where we left off last stream, uh, we took this from, you know, what was a big red blob. We gave it some shading, you know, gave it the details. We've done preliminary detail work on little bits and pieces. Um, we've left it at a point where it's able to be put into the game. Here it is in the game. It's quite a big piece. I definitely have shrunken it down quite a lot since I put it in uh, because it was just a little bit still oversized. Uh, so testament to making sure that you always test your assets in the game before you finish them. Uh, because if I had gone further than this and made any giant changes, it would have taken a lot of work to sort of you know work it back and, and get to that point. The things that I'm looking for that are really specific for scaling that make this look like a big building versus an oversized building is to do with the scale of the details. So is this door bigger than these other doors? If the doors are the same size, then you could just say, well, it's a large size building, but it, it is to scale. But if the door was twice as big, then you know that it's an overscaled building. So that's the only real difference is the scale of the details. If those are fine, then it's sort of up for your decision as to whether or not it's too big or too small. It's probably worth just thinking about bringing the original sketch back in so that we don't lose our direction. And the last thing I was saying before we ended the previous episode was this little line about uh, having more details that give away that this is a pub. I was thinking about having maybe some posters here. I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm just gonna block those in the same way I block everything in. Right, just creating some shapes. Let's bring the main character back in so that we can see the proportions of these things. And we also had those kegs that were gonna be sitting by the side of the building. I actually do have barrels in the game. This might be an opportunity to use other assets. There's a barrel. Now this isn't, I probably wouldn't call this like fully up to the standard that I have these days, but there's nothing really wrong with it. So I can just recolor it and bring it in. So just working on little bits and pieces. I want to think about the perspective as well. You know, this may be something that you would see popping out. Flatten out this here. Maybe we'll even see the inside of this. And there was one thing that I was trying to talk about a little earlier um, in the previous episode, which kind of got lost which was this idea that the heel would be higher up. So we can take all of this, bring it up, bring it down, and then diagonally just sort of drop down this way. Might look a bit more like a shoe now. And we could go more like this, maybe. Definitely looks more like a shoe now though, for sure. I, mean, I like this a lot. All right. So yeah, definitely liking this situation. And we can now start sharpening this up. And this is something that uh, definitely, when we start with that initial process of blocking stuff in, there's always the expectation that we will come back and sharpen up the details later. So this is me, you know, making sure that everything is, you know, edge perfect, pixel perfect, once I'm at this level, once I'm at this detail level, and it's perfectly fine to be this pedantic here because this is the point where we're worrying about this stuff, right? So I save it for this phase. Let's do a little more sharpening up here. And at this point, it's always a good opportunity to think about like what extra little details and um, flourishes you can add to each of these things that you're sharpening up. It's one thing to just get the pixels correct, but it's another thing to take an opportunity to, yeah, 
like express your creativity a bit more. So in this case, like I might think of, you know, we could have some sort of mantle or like a border around the door to give it a bit more flavor. If we bring the reference in, you know, do we have a, do we have a, a, a light above the door or some sort of torch out the front? And we've got a sign here. So you know, what can we, what can we do to make that look good? So let's think a little bit more about what we want this door to look like. I think actually I might remove the door entirely or have it be like swung open because I want the player to know that they can walk into the door. Uh, it's something that I'm not 100% consistent on in the game, but I think it would be uh, a nice precedent to set if I keep it open like this. And that way I can still draw the full door, but uh, don't have to make it feel like the player can't go into it. And I can get a little bit picky sometimes about getting these dimensions right. I think I'll bring this down one and that way it will be mostly the same. And then I do want to make this timber as well. So let's go like that. And maybe we could do some little highlights along the bottom just to make it feel a little warmer. It doesn't have to be so dreary. Nice. Let's also do some sort of like in engrave sort of, I don't know what you call that, engravings? Some sort of cutaway. Maybe we can bring this across. That's a little closer. We can maybe cast a shadow underneath it. That's a bit better. And we can continue this shadow in other spots on the door. Like this. This is something that I do quite a lot of actually in my uh, in my early work, but I think it still stands. You can just add a darker pixel if you want something to be embossed or engraved. I don't know those the words embossed comes out, engraved goes in. I'm not too sure, but in any case, uh, if you want something, if you've got like a big flat surface and you want it to look like the thing is coming out towards the camera then you light the top and you darken the bottom. This looks like it's coming out towards us because the light from the roof is hitting this edge. If we flip it, we do the dark on the top and the bright on the bottom, then it looks like it's going in. Like this. So that looks like it's being pushed in. This looks like it's being pulled out towards us. These very, very, you know, picky pixel tricks are things that you will probably pick up no matter what level you're working at. A lot of what this tutorial is about is giving you the tools to follow processes that actually allow you to take on much, much bigger sprites uh, before working down to these more specific, you know, technical placing pixel levels. We always come back to this level, this highest level of detail, you know, the single pixel. And so there are obviously tools that uh, we can use to, to get us there a little more reliably. Now, I wanna do a little more on this sign maybe. In the service of clarity, there are choices that you can make that don't make a whole lot of physical sense, but they make sense as far as like reading the picture. So for example, this, this shape. This represents the adjacent leg on the back side of the board. If I have this touching this, it's much harder to really understand what's happening there visually. But if I move it over just by one pixel, now you can see a lot more clearly what's going on. And just understanding that will, it kind of causes me to make choices uh, that I might not make if I was just trying to get it mathematically or like physically correct. I think that's pretty good. Let's make this like a 
metal color. Maybe give it a little bit of a highlight. And I did want it to be sort of like a blackboard. I'm going to try to follow when I do this single pixel work. What I really want to do is make it look like this width is consistent all the way down. And the only way to really do that is to follow the same breakdown of the lines. Okay, so like this, for example, makes it look like it got a bit thicker on this pixel. And you can remedy that by bringing it into, into step so that they're all moving at the same time. Now, if you want this to look like a really nice straight line, then you want the lengths of these to be the same all the way down. So I'm going to bring this down, getting closer. That's about even there. So now we didn't really change much, but that's enough to make this look a lot more correct. And that's pretty good. If you want to be really correct, you can copy this and paste it over here so that it's one to one, exactly the same. And that works too. Just be mindful of like these last steps being like, in this case, it's a lot shorter, even though we're following the same, the same basic amount of, of pixels before we go to the next step down, we might end up with these funny little artifacts at the end. So in the end, it just comes down to like being careful and mindful of like what it looks like and just making the decisions on the pixel level when you get to that point. Uh, it's not so bad. We're almost there. I don't really like how this here gives the impression of here makes it look like mm, makes it kind of look like it's it comes towards us like the board is a little bit bent this way so what I might do is just bring this down like that and then maybe just drop this off I think that's a bit better we'll try going up one again and then bringing this up I think that's a bit better Maybe even dropping that off to round off the corner. I don't really want to write in English for this because it's for a video game and that video game is going to have different uh, localization options, or at least I'd like it to. So I'm going to use some made up characters. Let's just draw some squiggles. Close enough. Now, what's next? Could do a little bit more work on this sign here. I think the square is a little basic. Uh, the shield is probably too much. But maybe if it's round, you know, could do something nice there. So I'm actually going to re remove the whole thing and replace it with a round shape. And I think that's probably the size that I want. Now I've spoken before about getting the shapes to look more correct, even if they're not mathematically correct. This is one of those examples where I'm just softening off those corners and I might make this a little smaller so that I can give this an outline. It's not very visible. We could bring all of this up so we could take everything in this space and grab all of these colors and say, what do you look like if I do this? I think I liked it darker. Nice. And uh, I wanna do a little couple of highlights here on this just to sell that depth. Looking pretty good. Also, let's get the underside as well. Yeah. And this way we can actually come and do the other edge as well. If the light's coming from this way, that might be a little brighter. I try to stay away from 
situations where we have the colors stepping up like this because it just gets a bit confusing to the eye. It would be kind of better if I maybe completely changed this to be like that. Took this darker color, made this here, and then made the middle color like that. That's usually a little bit clearer. And then if we think that's too dark, we could just take the whole thing and now it's lit correctly, or at least closer to correctly. Sometimes I just jump around for the sake of it. It's nice to give yourself some perspective. It's kind of like the only time when like being a bit ADD is totally fine because you come back with fresh eyes. We could, we could color it. I mean, there's no reason why it couldn't be painted. Now this is kind of interesting because we're doing pixel art of a painting. So the correctness of the light is now up to the how correct we think the artist would have been, if that makes any sense. I mean, it's a painting of a painting, really. I like it. So let's do some work on the flowers here. And for that, I think it's worth grabbing the references and taking a closer look at what we've got. Very, very easy kinds of flowers to work with. I might start with a bit of a darker color and then highlight just the front. A bit more dramatic, but it works, I think. And my approach for this is going to be, I want to build shape first. I don't want to be so noisy that you can't see anything else except for this thing. So a lot of what's here is very smooth. You know, I don't want to be so loud with the contrast that it blocks everything out visually. Instead, I just want it to be more subtle, but I also want to show a, a kind of pattern. You know, I want you to be able to see that there are leaves there. So it's a bit of a challenge, a bit of a balancing act between getting the shapes there without using too much contrast. And it's also something that I think about a lot in the contrast between colors that are right next to each other. So this color next to this color, it's very difficult to see what's going on. You can darken to make that work or just use the darker color. Like visibility is a, is a priority over realism as always. So again, I'm just trying to show like the shapes without yeah, that losing focus. So even here, I'm thinking it's a little strong, the colors. We'll see how it pans out. Now I'm just going to be drawing either dots here or like moving one pixel in a direction. So it's just that or that, that or that. Now I'm going to take the entire shape and I'm going to shade it in consistency with the rest of it. But then I'm going to shade the individual flowers as well. And then obviously the shadows cast by the flowers are really important as well. That's looking pretty good. It also might be a bit, a bit of an advantage to try making some of these a bit bigger to um, just give the eye an example of something to look at, to then imagine what these others look like. So for example, this would be an area where if I just, if I just draw one leaf like this now, you see leaves all through here, right? Without this, this all sort of just looks like a bit of a mess. I mean, it's not too bad down here, but this really helps reinforce what the heck is going on. So if you have a lot of messy areas, one clear example can help really, really uh, clarify what's happening in that space. And one thing you have to be mindful of about plants in general is that they seek the sun. Cool. That worked out really well.
Now, I'm a little concerned that it's a bit flat here, so I'm gonna bring in the brick texture once more. And I'm gonna do a bit of a trick here as well, where I'm just gonna add a little bit of this lighting right on the corner. I don't know if it's gonna to be too much. It's actually not too much, that's great. And I'm actually trying to add imperfections now. These imperfections will explain what the material is made of. And also they'll age the building too, which is important, you know. If you're designing any kind of object, thinking about how that object was manufactured and also the age of the object is really handy in putting you in a position where you can create worlds that feel more lived in and real. So just adding cracks and, you know, things like that it goes a long way. Structural things like cracks appear over many years, but little things like um, growths and roots and weeds growing are also very, very common and don't take long to accumulate. So you can definitely hint at how well the place is being cared for with vegetation. This place that the building is situated in, it's an area where there used to be uh, a big forest. If you can think of it like, like Isengard or something uh, in Lord of the Rings. So if we look, this is kind of, it used to be a big forest that goes all the way across and it's been deforested and turned into farmland and a city around this tree which used to be the center of the forest. The sort of little side narrative that's happening is there's a almost a conflict between the natural world and the sort of man-made world such that the forest is trying to fight back a little bit. It's trying, it's always trying to grow back in. So in this town, you can see that the roads are all dirt and they've been cleared away, but there's always grass growing and peeking through the, through the cracks. Um, despite all of the wear of people, you know, walking in and stuff like that. Now you can see I've already got grass. This is part of the ground texture that's just skirting the bottom of the building here. So I don't need to go too far because uh, it's just already, it's already going to be there. But we can add little things like roots coming up. I can show you what that looks like. And I like to give mine just little leaves. And then give it some color. Finally, uh, the shadow. So it's casting a shadow because it's, it's, it's coming away from the building. It's got some height to it or some depth to it. So we can do this. And I'm doing this on the layer that has the thing on it. So I'm, the shadows are actually part of this layer. Just in case I need to move it or do anything with it. I'm not, I'm not changing the structure of the building just for the sake of the shadow. So little things like that go a long way as well. Let's take a look at this sign here. So a lot of these pubs have gold lettering. Even kind of interesting, the idea that at night you would light it up. So maybe we won't have these kinds of lamps, but we could have oil lamps either side of the sign, for example. Maybe even below the sign or above it. So I'm gonna block that in. Maybe go a little darker, actually. There are some tricks you can use if you wanna I don't know if we wanted to do an outline for this we could either like we could do an actual hollow uh, hollow rectangle or you could select modify contract by one and then fill is another way to do it lots and lots of ways to do very similar things I honestly when I'm working I tend not to go through the menus too much I just use the shortcut keys that I know work to get what I want, want to get in this case, I'm just using the line tool to draw straight lines. And I'm just gonna be like really rough. <laughs> that's actually readable as the shoe in. But I guess that's how, that's how it goes sometimes. It is supposed to be a bit of a cipher. Now, as far as fonts go, like what is the the font that this town uses. That's getting a little bit world building, but uh, it's not out of the question to think about. 
So in this case, you know, we could do like more like serifs. This is very legible though. <laughs> Maybe I'll go back the other way. The E especially, especially is a bit much. Not bad. A little trick you could also do is if you take a selection of everything that's not what's on this layer and then invert it, then go to a new layer and fill with contiguous turned off, you can get what could be like the shadow of it. Right now it's above, but if I move this layer down, if I grab it and drag it down, now it's beneath and now we've got some depth. So we could just take this and make it darker. And now we've got some depth on that. Very nice. And we can follow suit here with the sign. Might even be nice to give this a bit of a... Bit of a something. Give these some framing, so like a little bit of diagonal here to indicate that there's like a four pieces of timber that make up the sign. And I think I'm going to do some little, some little uh, lamps on the edge as well. And I'm just going to copy and paste them once I've done them. I don't want to spend too much time. Yep. Nice. Let's see what we can do with this. I think maybe if it was made of bricks, that could help. Yeah. And then because this is an edge with bricks, we can give it that brick staggering as well. And wherever you get really close to other parts where there's bricks, you want to be consistent with the shapes. So here I'm just making sure there's like continuity there. And then I'm going to use the next color up. to give this its inside edge as well. Next part is roof tiles. Uh, pretty straightforward what we want to do here. We want to do the same thing we were doing with bricks so we can give the impression of tiles. Coming all the way down. Or we can keep it straight. But in this case, I'm just going to do... I'm going to experiment with keeping the slats visible just for the sake of it. And then I'm just gonna start coming away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cool. So what else can we add? Let's come back and ask the question, what else do we need to add to make this the pub that we want it to be? I think the probably the last missing ingredient is some sort of like table and chair setup. So an easy way we can do this is just by drawing some flat lines like this. And you know, we might even be able to put some NPCs in here. And we would block in some chairs and we can work out exactly what they look like a bit later. That's not part of this tutorial. Okay, so beyond this point, what I would probably be doing is just spending time tightening up these edges, making sure, you know, the, the perspective is right where it needs to be right, making sure that I and just consistent with things. So, you know, if I if I show this side here inside of the building, then I need to see it here as well. And, you know, if I set some sort of rule at some point, like how the flowers look, you know, making sure that I'm consistent here as well. You can always come back to the reference and just check to see if there's anything major that you've forgotten. I think I've checked off most of the things here. 
I can imagine maybe some extra bits and pieces around the side here. If I had NPCs in this space, I would have some people maybe leaning on the wall, you know, smoking a pipe or, you know, some patrons, you know, because it's a public space. That would be important for me. Maybe even I would have some sort of animation for the chimney or somebody sitting out the window. Because it's a pub, having there be people there is a really important part of the identity of what it is. So I think this is where we'll wrap it up. As you can see, I've still got quite a lot to do, but I've given you pretty good examples for most of the elements here that I would be covering. Don't forget, there are opportunities to add incidental storytelling. So telling stories visually, I think, is a really powerful tool that I didn't go into much uh, depth here in this tutorial, but maybe in another tutorial we can cover it. It's more of a game design thing than a pixel art thing, maybe more conceptual than technical. But having things like maybe, you know, if this is a very rough bar, maybe there's a hole in a wall somewhere where someone's been punched through the wall. Or if this is a war-torn town, you know, maybe a place where the roof is caved in because a trebuchet, you know, knocked in the roof and it's been repaired or something like that. Telling the player about the world with the design of the spaces in the world, I think is a really important thing that I wouldn't skip over. Okay, so that's been Detail and part two of this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Hey pal, thanks for watching and thanks most especially to the patrons and Twitch subs who support this channel and my game dev project Insignia. To find out more, click the links in the description below. And uh, if you like this video, tell YouTube by clicking the like button and then YouTube will tell me and then I'll make more videos. That's nice.